Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi were the dynamic duo in the first prequel film. And once again, they're the heroes of their own book. But is this adventure worth taking? Stay tuned and find out if this is a supersonic pod race winner or it's sword dog loser. Where should I start reading? What is canon versus legends? When does the story begin? The answer to these questions is right here on Star Wars Timeline. Master and Apprentice is a canon novel written by Claudia Gray and released in April of 2019. Huge shout out to the cover artist Alice Zhang. She captures all the drama that we see in the novel. Now, let's talk about when this takes place. The events are happening during the peaceful days of the Republic before the Clone Wars. It covers eight years from 40 years BBY to 32 years BBY or before Battle of Yevon. Or another way to look at it is eight years before the episode one, The Phantom Menace. A friendly reminder to the newcomers. The attack on the first Death Star at the end of episode four, New Hope, is regarded as year zero in the Star Wars franchise. All the events before that time are abbreviated BBY or before Battle of Yavin. And ABY stands for after Battle of Yavin. Uh, this is true for both legends and canon material. The book opens up with a splashbuckling intro on a hot controlled world where Qui-Gon Jinn, his much younger 17-year-old apprentice Obi-Wan Kenobi, and their uneasy relationship are first introduced. After a brief return to Coruscant, the pair is sent by the council to settle a political dispute on a planet called Pijal, where they meet the, uh, Count Dooku's former apprentice, the uncanny Jedi, Ryle Avaros. It's here where the bulk of the story takes place. The heroes help safeguard a young princess, untangle a web of political intrigues and industrial machinations, and walk a difficult path the Force lays in front of them, confronting hard questions and figuring out their relationship along the way. Before we get into the actual review, I'd like to say a few things on the Jedi to give you context on my thoughts and opinions about the book. A young Jedi answering the call of destiny and following the way of the Force has always been my favorite aspect of the franchise. For a young seven-year-old fan, Luke was the center of my universe. He was an ordinary boy who performed extraordinary heroic deeds. The original trilogy was an ideal sandbox. It invited me to complete the images of heroic Jedi Knights with my own imagination. For me, they were like ancient rustic monks, uh, beacons of light spread across the galaxy, these ancient powerful wizards similar to what we saw in the Lord of the Rings franchise. Unfortunately, the prequels didn't live up to that fantasy. I'm not talking about the quality of the films, that's an entirely different subject matter. I'm talking about the execution and the ideas which didn't resonate with me. I wasn't a fan of this version of self-righteous Jedi Order Jedi who preached peace and neutrality, and yet they participated in the politics and even took up arms as the Republic's generals. And to add the insult to the injury, the entire Jedi Order, along with its shining stars and 10,000 years worth of experience, couldn't handle a single Sith. The all-powerful Jedi Master Yoda, who I grew up with, who could see into the future, could not identify a single Sith right in front of his little green face. And absolute badasses like Kit Fisto and Mace Windu were gutted like fish by an old man. So what good are they? I appreciate all the fans who can rationalize all those points and enjoy the films, they're just not for me. Despite this fact, I became completely engrossed in the Clone Wars television show and savored every single book I could get my hands on, and adjusting to Jedi Generals was a pretty small sacrifice. I zoomed through everything from Approaching Storm, Labyrinth of Evil, The Cloak of Deception, The Excellent Shatterpoint, and my favorite, the Met Star Duology. Now, enter the highly anticipated Master and Apprentice. From the early chapters, I knew this book would deliver a lot more than simple fantasy escapism. Very few uh, authors understand the Star Wars themes so well or flesh them out with such detailed nuisance as Claudia Gray. She adapts some of the most iconic characters George Lucas ever put on screen effortlessly, and she goes above and beyond honoring their legacy. A Claudia Gray's self-contained book works twofold. Gray deconstructs both characters, making them instantly recognizable, yet fresh. Qui-Gon is a maverick, who questions the Jedi dogmas we see in Phantom Menace. And yet there is another, more passionate aspect to him as well. 
He questions his own ability as an ideal master for his young student and has a very sober outlook on the Chosen One prophecy, which is explained in great detail in the book. Kenobi is a practical yet emotional youth who questions his path, and he's frustrated with his master. He senses Qui-Gon's hesitation and feels betrayed when he learns that his master is offered the seat on the council, which would spell the end of their apprenticeship. Second, Master and Apprentice is a wonderful complement to the prequel films. Claudia's grades and grossing study of Qui-Gon's and Obi-Wan's Kenobi's characters adds a lot of context to the scenes, like meeting the young Anakin for the first time and why Qui-Gon decides to mentor him despite the Council's warning. Finally, there are beautiful teacher and student parallels comparing generations of Jedi. Yoda and Count Dooku, Count Dooku and Qui-Gon, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan Kenobi, and so forth. As a fan of the original trilogy, I was cautiously optimistic when this project was first announced, but I knew Claudia Gray would deliver a memorable story, and I was surprised with how much I missed Qui-Gon's striking personality. Master and Apprentice gets 4 out of 4 without a question. Even a prequel's non-believer such as myself was converted within the first chapter. I think the Phantom Menace fans will be absolutely ecstatic, and if you're a Legends follower who is on the fence about picking the new books, I recommend you give this one a try. It's worth it. Thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed this video and will consider supporting my channel by subscribing. If you read this book, I'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned for more awesome uh, Legends and Canon reviews, and I'll see you next time.